So first of all, I want to thank everyone. Welcome to our third annual Poetry Out Loud celebration. This is a national competition. So students all across the country have had poetry competitions in their schools. And tonight is actually the last night to hold the school competition. So we have two winners from every classroom here at Conant who are competing to be the school's champion. So after tonight, whoever wins will go on to be our champion in the regional competition and compete against the other schools in our region to try and become New Hampshire's Poetry Out Loud competition. Um, if they win for the state of New Hampshire, they then go on to compete down in Washington, D.C. with the winner from every single state. So it's a huge honor and it's a huge privilege. And we're so appreciative um, that you allowed your children to participate and you dropped your children off from work. You maybe left work early. You dashed home. Maybe you haven't eaten yet. Maybe you're still at work. Thank you, parents. Thank you, guardians. We really appreciate you taking the time to support our kids and to support poetry and to support tonight. We're going to have two rounds. We're going to go in alphabetical order. After the first round, we will take a 10 minute break and then we will start the second round. At the end of the second round, we will take another 10 minute break to let the judges finish tallying up their scores and we will announce the first, second and third place winners. Um, we have four judges here tonight. We have Sean Lucas, who is a math teacher here at the high school. He's going to be the accuracy judge. We have Jamie Melvin, who is a graduate student at Antioch University. We have Kelly Budd, who is our library media uh, associate, assistant per, in charge. She's in charge of the library. I don't know the formal term. And we have Sarah D'Angelatonio, who is a professor at Franklin Paris University. So we're so grateful to our judges who took the time out of their busy schedule to join us here tonight. And without further ado, we'll get started. So first up, we have Sabria Arsenault with her poem, Silence. Silence by Thomas Hood. There is silence where hath been no sound. There is silence where no sound may be. In the cold grave, under the deep, deep sea, or in the wide desert where no life is found, which hath been mute and still must sleep profound. No voice is hushed, no life treads silently, but clouds and cloudy shadows wander free, which never spoke over the idle ground, but in green ruins. In the desolate walls of antique palaces where man hath been, though the dun fox or wild hyena calls and owls flick continually between, shriek to the echo and the low winds moan. There the true silence is, self-conscious and alone. Next up, we will have Evan Bailey with All This and More. All This and More by Mary Carr. The Devil's Tour of Hell did not include a factory line where molten lead spilled into mouths held wide. No electric drill spiraling screws into hands and feet, nor giant pliers to lower you into simmering vats. Instead, a circle of light opened on your stuffed armchair, whose chintz orchids did not boil and change, and the devil adjusted your new spiked antenna almost delicately, with claws curled and lacquered black before he spread his leather wings to leap into the acid green sky. So your head became a TV hull, a gargoyle mirror, your doppelganger, sloppy at the mouth and swollen at the joints, enacted your days in sinuous, slow motion, your lines delivered with a mocking sneer. Sometimes the frame froze, reversed, began again the red eyes of a friend. You cursed your girl child, cowered behind the drapes, parents alive. Again. And puzzled by this new form, 
that's why you clawed your way back to this life. Next up, we have Ben Cutchin and Acquainted with the Night. Acquainted with the Night by Robert Frost. I have been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the furthest city light. I've looked down the saddest city lane. I've walked, I've passed the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes, unwilling to explain. I've stood still and stopped the sound of feet. When far away an interrupted cry came over houses from another street. And further still, at an earthly height, one luminary clock against the sky proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. Next, we have Temateo Jiwa and BLK History Month. BLK History Month by Nikki Giovanni. If Black History Month is not viable, then wind does not carry the seeds and drop them on fertile ground. Rain does not dampen the land and encourage the seeds to root. Sun does not warm the earth and kiss the ceilings and tell them plain, you're as good as anybody else. You've got a place here too. Next up, we have Sarah Gorgolioni with Cartoon Physics Part One. Cartoon Physics. Part one by Nick Flynn. Children under the age of, say, 10, shouldn't know that the universe is ever expanding. Inexorably pushing into the vacuum, galaxies swallowed by galaxies, whole solar systems collapsing, all of it acted out in silence. At 10, we're still learning the rules of cartoon animation, that if a man draws a door on a rock, only he can pass through it. Anyone else who tries will crash into the rock. Ten-year-olds should stick with burning houses, car wrecks, ships going down, earthbound, tangible disasters, arenas where they can be heroes. You can run back into a burning house. Sinking ships have lifeboats. The trucks will come with their ladders. If you jump, you will be saved. A child places their hand on the roof of a school bus and drives across a city of sand. She knows the exact spot it will skid, at which point the bridge will give, who will swim to safety, and who will be pulled under by sharks. She will learn that if a man runs off the edge of a cliff, he will not fall until he notices his mistake. Next up, we have Haley Hannon with My Prime of Youth is But a Frost of Care. My Prime of Youth is But a Frost of Care is by Chidiak Ditchman. My Prime of Youth is But a Frost of Cares. I'm sorry, word, please. I'm sorry, one more. My feast of joy is but a dish of pain. My crop of corn is but a field of tares, and all my good is but vain, hope of gain. The day is done, and yet I saw no sun. And now I live, and now my life is done. The spring is past, and yet it hath not sprung. The fruit is dead, and yet the leaves are green. My youth is gone, and yet I am but young. I saw the world, and yet I was not seen. My thread is cut, and yet it was not spun. And now I live, and now my life is done. I sought my death and found it in my womb. I looked for life, saw it was a shade. I trode the earth, I knew it was my tomb, and now I die, and now I am but made. The glass 
it's full. And now the glass is run. And now I live. And now my life is done. Next up, we have Natalie Lambert with I Heard a Fly Buzz. I heard a fly buzz when I died by Emily Dickinson. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The silence in the room was like the silence in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes around had wrung them dry and breaths were gathering firm. For that last onset, when the king be witnessed in the room, I willed my keepsakes, signed away what portion of me be assignable, and then it was there, interposed a fly. With blue, uncertain, stumbling buzz between the light and me, and then the windows failed, and then I could not see to see. Next up, we have Alicia Mackey with Carnival. Carnival by Rebecca Lindenberg. The mask that burns like a violin, the mask that sings only dead languages, that loves the destruction of being put on, the mask that sighs like a woman, even though a woman wears it, the mask beaded with freshwater pearls, with seeds, the plumed mask, the mask with a sutured mouth, a moon face with a healed gash that means harvest, a glower that hides wanting a grotesque pucker. Here's a beaked mask, a braided mask. Here's a mask with no eyes, a mask that looks like a mask but isn't. Please don't try to unribbon it. The mask that snows coins, the mask full of wasps, lace mask to net escaping thoughts. Pass me the rouged mask, the one made of sheet music, or the jackal mask, the hidebound mask that renders lovers identical with night. Next up, we have Olivia Martin with Love Song. Love Song by Dorothy Parker. My own dear love, he is strong and bold, and he cares not what comes after. His words ring sweet as a chime of gold, and his eyes are lit with laughter. He is jubilant as a flag unfurled, oh, a girl. She did not forget him. My own dear love is all my world, and I wish I'd never met him. My love, he's mad, and my love, he's fleet, and a wild young wood thing bore him. The ways are fair to his roaming feet, and the skies are sunlit for him. As sharply sweet to my heart he seems, as the fragrance of acacia. My own dear love, he's all my dreams, and I wish he were in Asia. My love runs by like a day in June, and he makes no friends of sorrows. He'll tread his galloping rigadoon in the pathway of the morrows. He'll live his days where the sunbeams start, nor could storm or wind uproot him. My own dear love, he's all my heart, and I wish somebody'd shoot him. Next, we have Isaiah Olivo with Cathedral of Salt. Cathedral of Salt by Nick Flynn. Beneath all this, I'm carving a cathedral of salt. I keep the entrance hidden. No one seems to notice the hours I'm missing. I'll bring you one night. It's where I go when I hang up the phone. Neither you nor your soul is waiting for me at the end of this. I know that. The salt nearly clear after I chisel out the pews. The see-through altar, the opaque panes of glass that depict the stations of our cross. Here's the day we met. 
Here's the day we remember we met. The air down here will kill us, some say. Some wear paper masks. Some still imagine the air above the green trees, thick with bees, building solitary nests out of petals. What's the name for this? Ineffable? The endless white will blind you, some say. But what is there to see we haven't already seen? Some say it's like poking a stick into a river. You might as well simply write about the stick or the river. We have our last contestant for round one, Kelly Williams, When You Are Old. When You Are Old by William Butler Yeats. When you are old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with love false or true, but one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and he hid his face amid a crowd of stars. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Round two. First up, we have Sabria Arsenault with The Current Isolationism. The Current Isolationism by Camille Rankin. In the half light, I am most at home, my shadow as company. When I feel hot, I push a button to make it stop. I mean this stain on my mind I can't get out. How human I seem. Like a modern man, I traffic in extinction. I have a gift. Like an animal, I sustain. A flock of birds, when touched, I scatter. I will not approach unless the back is turned. My heart betrays. I'll admit, I am afraid. How selfish of me. When there's no one here, I have the distance between our bodies infinitesimally. In this long passageway, I pose against the wallpaper, dig my heels in. The light in my vision, the back door opens on a garden that is always in bloom. The dogs are chained so they can't attack like I know they want to. In the next yard over, honeybees swarm and their sound is huge. Next up, we have Evan Bailey with In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields by John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. 
To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Next up, we have Ben Cutchin with After the War. After the War by Rachel Galvin. When he got to the farmhouse, he rifled through the cabinets, drawers, and cupboards. And his buddies did too. The place was abandoned, or so he thought. And his buddies did too. He tried to talk to people in town, and his buddies did too. But he was the only one whose Yiddish made it across into German. They took his meaning. He, in the farmhouse, took a camera and a gun. But his buddies, who knows? About the gun, it's also hard to say. But after the war, he took up photography. Why not? Shot beautiful women for years. Got pretty good at it. And how? Won prizes and engraved plates. Put them in a drawer. Forgot the war. Forgot his buddies. Forgot the women. Forgot the drawer. Next up, we have Tematai Ojiwa with Life in a Love. Life in a Love by Robert Browning. Escape me? Never. Beloved, while I am I and you are you, so long as the world contains us both, me, the loving, and you, the loth, while the one eludes, must the other pursue? At last, I fear. It seems too good indeed, though I do my best and I shall scarce succeed. But what if I fail of my purpose here? Is but to keep the nerves at strain, to dry one's eyes at fall? And baffled, get up and begin again. Line. Line. So the chase takes up one's life, that's all. While look but once from your farthest bound, so deep. Word, sorry. Word. No sooner the old hope goes to ground than a new one straight to the self same mark. I shape me ever removed. Next, we have Sarah Gorgoglioni with Brief. Grief by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. I tell you, hopeless grief is passionless, that only men incredulous of despair beat upward to God's throne in loud excess of shrieking and reproach. Full desertness in souls as countries lie silent bare under the blanching vertical eye glare of the absolute heavens. Deep hearted man, express grief for thy dead in silence like to death, most like a monumental statue set in everlasting watch and moveless woe till itself crumble to the dust beneath. Touch it, the marble eyelids are not wet. If it could weep, it could arise and go. Next up, we have Haley Hannon with Dirge Without Music. Dirge Without Music by Emma St. Vincent Millay. I am not resigned to the shutting away of loving hearts in the hard ground. So it is, so it will be, for so it has been time out of mind. Into the darkness they go, the wise and the lovely, crowned with lilies and with laurel they go. I am not resigned. Lovers and thinkers into the earth with you. Be one with the dull, the indiscriminate dust. A fragment of what you felt, of what you knew, a formula, a phrase remains. But the best is lost. The answers, quick and keen, the honest looks, the laughter, the love, they are gone. They are gone to feed the roses, elegant and curled is the blossom, fragrant is the blossom, I know. But I do not approve. 
more precious with the light in your eyes and all the roses in the world. Down, down, down into the darkness of the grave. Gently they go. The beautiful, the tender, the kind. Quietly they go. The intelligent, the witty, the brave. I know, but I do not approve. And I am not resigned. Next up, we have Natalie Lambert with 300 Goats. 300 Goats by Naomi Shahib Nye. In icy fields, is water flowing in the tank? Will they huddle together, warm bodies pre pressing? <laughs> is it the year of the goat or the sheep? Scholars debating Chinese zodiac, follower or leader? Oh, lead them to a warm corner, little ones towards bulkier bodies. Lead them to the brush, which cuts the icy wind. Another frigid night swooping down. Aren't you worried about them? I ask my friend, who lives by herself on the ranch of goats, far from here, near the town of Ozona. She shrugs. Not really. They know what to do. They're goats. Next up is Alicia Mackey with April Midnight. April Midnight by Arthur Simons. Side by side through the streets at midnight, roaming together, wandering lost through the tumultuous night of London in the miraculous April weather, roaming together under the gaslight, day's work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool the wind blows fresh in our faces, cleansing, entrancing. After the heat and the fumes and the footlights where you dance and I watch your dancing. Good it is to be here together. Good to be roaming, even in London even at midnight. You the dancer, and I the dreamer, children together, wandering lost in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Next up, we have Olivia Martin with The Maid's Lament. The Maid's Lament by Walter Savage Londor. I loved him not, and yet now he is gone. I feel I am alone. I checked him while he spoke, yet could he speak? Alas, I would not check. For reasons not to love him, once I sought, and wearied all my thought. To vex myself and him, I now would give. My love, could he but live? Who lately lived for me, and when he found, t'was vain in holy ground. He hid his face amid the shades of death. I waste for him my breath. Who wasted his for me, but mine returns, and this lorn bosom burns with stifling heat, heaving it up in sleep and waking me to weep. Tears that had melted his soft heart for years, wept he as bitter tears. Merciful God, such was his latest prayer. These may she never share. Quieter his breath, his breast more cold than daisies in the mold. Where children spell athwart the churchyard gate, his name and life's brief date. Pray for him, gentle souls, whoever you be. And oh, pray too for me. Next up, we have Isaiah Olivo with The Chimney Sweeper. The Chimney Sweeper, A Little Black Thing Among the Snow by William Blake. A little black thing among the snow, crying, weep, weep, in notes of woe. 
Where are thy father and mother, say? They are both gone up to the church to pray. Because I was happy upon the heath and smiled among the winter snow, they clothed me in the clothes of death and taught me to sing the notes of woe. And because I was hap am happy and dance and sing, they think they have done me no injury and are gone to praise God and his priest and king who make up a heaven of our misery. Next up, we have our last contestant for round two, Kelly Williams with I Remember, I Remember. I Remember, I Remember by Thomas Hood. I remember, I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember the roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin built and where my brother set, the laburnum on his birthday, the tree is living yet. I remember I remember where I was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then. That is so heavy now. And summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. I remember I remember the fir trees dark and high. I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance. But now, tis little joy to know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you would kindly give us about five or six minutes for the judges to tally and the scorekeepers to tally, we will be with you in five minutes with our first, second, and third place winners. Thanks, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Um, there's a few thank yous that I just want to get out of the way real quick before we announce the first, second, and third place winners. Um, I really want to thank Mr. Dustin and Superintendent Ruben Duncan for allowing this to go on tonight um, and making the space available. Um, thank you, Mrs. Swift, for letting us use your room and your equipment. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Nicholas Handy for giving up his Friday night to live stream and setting up the live stream broadcast to um, the judges and the accuracy scores to Mr. Haley and Ms. Elwell, who have done a rigorous job of tallying and keep making sure all the points add up two, three, four, five, six times. And um, to the English department for helping me put this on, to the parents and the guardians who so supported your kids. I know some of you are watching from home tonight and dropping them off and picking them up. And lastly, to the students. Doesn't matter who won tonight. You were brave, you were beautiful. You are bold and you should be very, very impressed with yourselves because all of us are. So with the thank yous out of the way, we're gonna do the third place winner first. So in third place in the third annual Poetry Out Loud competition, we have Mr. Ben Cutchen. In second place tonight, the runner up Poetry Out Loud competition, Ms. Kelly Williams. Okay, last but not least, if I could have a drum roll, please. I can hear you with calf. This year's Poetry Out Loud champion for a third time, Mr. Evan Bailey. Evan will be representing us for the third year in a row in the regional competition. Last year, Evan made it all the way to the New Hampshire States. 
So thank you, everyone. We really appreciate you. We appreciate your children. Everybody did a wonderful job. We're going to send them home now. Have a great weekend. Have a great night.